What's going on everybody? So I just finished my second interview yesterday with a company and I'm about to have my third. And so, so far I just kind of want to document what I've been through so far, maybe help some people out in, in their job search and um, how to handle interviews uh, from my experience. I won't go into details about the company by saying their name or anything like that or, and I'm gonna try to avoid actual questions that they ask just because they have these set questions set up that way for a reason. A lot of these questions are meant to be answered on the spot and truthfully uh, because they also want to see how you handle the pressure of having to answer these questions. And so I won't go into full details about that, but I will give you guys uh, my experience and uh, maybe some generalized questions, things like that. So first meeting with the HR lady, she was really nice. Um, she asked me more so personal experience questions such as what have I done, uh, what was the most exciting project I've worked on. Um, she asked me those kinds of questions and so uh, she asked me about the, the tech that I've used. Uh, she told me what uh, they use at the company, things that they expect, stuff like that. So she didn't go into full details about the role, but she also uh, took a lot of time to answer my questions, which uh, a huge portion of, of uh, our interview together were just me asking her uh, about the culture of the uh, company, you know, trying to get a feel for it, uh, how people feel in there, how did she feel personally, how did she end up at that job? Uh, things like that. So, and I find that asking questions like that, um, for one, they're they're great because they give you a more realistic feel for the company and how it handles its uh, how it handles its workers, its employees, and you can also get a feel for whether or not somebody actually likes that place or if they're kind of just doing it just like like they're just doing a job just because it's a job and it pays the bills. So. I got the feeling from her that she really enjoyed working there. She even talk, like, talked to me about um, negative experiences from prior jobs before coming there and the big difference in how people are treated and how she felt in her position. And so I thought that was really great. That was an awesome selling point for the company. Uh, at no point did we cover uh, money or anything like that. She did ask me what my range was. And I'm not gonna really say my range here just because that might change or whatever. but. Uh, she did ask me about the range to which I deferred and told her that I would want to hear more details about the company uh, and the position before I make a final choice on that. And she said, okay, you know, she was very nice about it. And so uh, we moved on and about an hour or so later, um, actually, I'm sorry, the next day I got the email from, uh, from her saying that she scheduled me with the, uh, with the hiring manager. And so we, we uh, blocked off an entire hour for that. Uh, it was expected to only take about 45 minutes, but we got really into it. And so I kind of kept them there a little longer, just uh, bugging them and all that. So yesterday, which I believe it's it was uh, Wednesday. So yesterday I had an hour long interview with the, um, with the hiring manager. And I was very intimidated at that point. Like I find that um, I interview a lot better when it's either in person or if we, uh, if I can actually see the other person, which in this case we did it uh, through a video conference. And so I find that I interview a lot better when I can see them and see their expression and see whether or not they like or don't like what I'm saying, things like that, you know. Um, so for me, this was less nerve wracking than the first interview, which was over the phone. Uh, but in this one, um, he kind of went over the role. He went over a lot of the expectancies for the position. It's a software engineering position, uh, but more so of a junior role. Uh, but he went over that and asked me a series of questions. A lot of them were related to a uh, back end. Uh, some of them were more so uh, situational, such as if this happens, how would you uh, handle it type of situations. I won't go into details over the questions because um, Apart from me, they're still interviewing other people, and so I don't want to uh, ruin that for anybody. But uh, 
a lot of situational things. And so if you're going for a full stack similar uh, role or if the role says that it involves a lot of back end and stuff like that, then assume that they're gonna ask you a lot of general questions about that. Um, with that said, things like uh, security and um, how would you uh, how would you send uh, let's say an API like data and things? How would you handle situations where a route is being overly stressed and uh, and you need to scale things like that? Um, so just look into those kinds of details, uh, especially things with uh, SQL language. Uh, that you may have forgotten if, if you're not using them every day they're very easy to forget um, and so don't neglect that I'd say uh, so those were those were pretty much the kind of uh, questions that he asked we also did a coding challenge at the end and it wasn't a very difficult challenge however uh, there was a few got like gotchas in there uh, Initially, I went with the brute force uh, approach just to get to the final solution in a quick way. And then from there, we refactored and went for a, uh, a better solution uh, that had a, a better uh, big O. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, then after that, he threw a wrench in there and said, OK, well, uh, initially, all of the numbers were positive. And so in an array, they were all positive. And so what happens if they're negative? And so now I had to switch up my entire algorithm, which I guess was a uh, was a usual for a lot of people that did this problem from what he said. And so but what he really wanted from me wasn't really the, the right answer. Um, a lot of times during these interviews, they don't really care if you're getting the right answer like it helps. It definitely look, makes you look good if you're getting the right answer. However, uh, because it's more of a junior role, uh, what he wanted to know is one, how do I think, uh, which I expressed just by going over my plan first for the algorithm challenge. So uh, initially what I like to do is, um, before I even start anything, is ask my questions and so you ask all possibilities like, OK, I'm, I see an array like I know it's an array, but it doesn't tell me anything about the numbers. Can I assume that these numbers are sorted? Uh, can I you know, can I assume that uh, these numbers won't appear twice? Can I assume that I can't add these two numbers together uh, when there's when they're just one and I need two? you know, things like that, like uh, just little questions like that that might seem dumb. But if they're if they're not asked then you can basically set yourself up for failure. And in that case, I didn't ask, like, what if uh, all the numbers are negative? You know, so that was one question that I missed. However, um, he threw that in there as a wrench. So um, my next step for for uh, solving the algorithm challenge is usually to explain my process, what I'm going to be attempting to do with it. And so uh, when you're interviewing with somebody, a lot of times the uh, interviewer uh, is he's also a part of it. And so you can't just forget that. Like he's not just watching you completely silent and just like waiting for you to solve it or to fail. So uh, when you go over your process, they might say, OK, well, if you do this, then how you know, how are you going to handle this other thing? And so that's giving you a clue of whether or not you're going in the right direction. And uh, if you have to deviate in some way in your planning. And so uh, keep that in mind while you're while you're doing those interviews is uh, go over your plan before you even write any code. Just go over your plan, maybe write out some pseudocode, um, just put in some comments in there and steps, which will also help you uh, keep track of what you're attempting to do as you're doing it. So that's basically what I did. And then from there, I wrote code in a very brute force, ugly way. I had two for loops and everything in there, which is generally not a great idea. However, it gets the job done. And then from there, you can backtrack and get rid of one of the for loops and just uh, do something else to it. You know, limit the range of, of your loop and then add a plus one in there somewhere. So uh, essentially, uh, 
you go you make something hideous and just brute force it and then you look at ways to optimize it you look at the big o of it and find out whether you whether or not you can uh, make it better and optimize it in some way and you know take some time to really think about it so basically when he said that he said okay but you know for one you're using two for loops for this so that like if you have an array of numbers that are like like 20,000 or 40,000 or something like that, you know, two for loops running at once can be really bad. Okay, so uh, basically, and he's right. And basically, from there, uh, you start thinking about, okay, how can I make this better? How can I improve this code so that it doesn't use all that, you know, and there's, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. Uh, but essentially, because of how uh, what the algorithm was, um, I was like, okay, well, I can make this one, I can make this just one loop and follow these steps and these steps. And if I do this, I can get rid of this. I can reinitialize my, uh, my initial store variable uh, to be something else, you know? And I went through the steps with him before I started refactoring. And he threw, uh, he threw some tips in there too of things that I could do because he wanted to watch uh, whether or not I would listen or whether or not I would uh, ask questions about what he just said, you know, so it's a two way interaction. So he asked me, he asked me a bunch of questions. I answered uh, and we kind of just bounced off each other and worked together to solve this problem. It wasn't like it was me coding and doing the majority of it. But at the same time, I felt like we were a team <laughs> trying to solve this problem. So it was a really great experience. And uh, at the end of it all, I, uh, I got to ask him about his personal journey and all that because he told me his, his story was a lot similar to mine. Uh, he didn't go to college and all this stuff. He, he was self-taught, which I thought was super awesome. Um, and, you know, he's a hiring manager, so he's doing pretty well for himself. But uh, I thought it was pretty awesome. And so I made him tell, him, <laughs> tell me his story. And I was like, man, I was blown away just because of how cool it was. But... You know, because of that, we got to know each other better, um, which is really important if you're gonna be uh, if you're gonna be working with somebody. It doesn't matter whether whether they're in another state or whatever. You're gonna have to have constant interactions with this person, and then you're gonna have to uh, be able to go to them, and they're gonna have to be able to go to you because a lot of these projects are gonna be kind of mingled and intertwined with each other, and so. Uh, if you're the type of person that gets stuck and doesn't say anything and just like sits there all day like trembling because you're embarrassed or um, think that that people are not gonna are not gonna respect you or something like that then that's probably not what a lot of people are looking for because that's not moving the product forward and so keep that in mind uh, there was also a lot of honesty in how I answered my questions with that, what I mean is that uh, when he asked me something, I openly told him whether or not I didn't know it. If I did not know the answer to it, I would just tell him. And he said, OK, cool. Thank you for letting me know. And uh, when I wanted to take a guess at something, because like sometimes you'll they'll ask you something and, you know, at some point you knew it but you may have forgotten it because it was one of those things like, oh, I, you know, I haven't used it in, in such a long time, you know, and so I told him, hey, I, I want to take a guess at this, okay? And so he already knew that I was going to try and um, I was going to try to answer it, but it might not be like 100% right. And he appreciated the honesty behind that. Uh, also, the ones that I didn't get, uh, I wrote down and I researched them because uh, for one, I don't want to get asked that same question. For all I know, the next interview might, might uh, require those same questions that he asked me the last time and so i researched them just so that if he asked me again i can come back and say okay this is what it is you know i looked it up you're not going to get me again with these same questions <laughs> so um so uh, my next interview is going to be four hours long and i'm going to get grilled by uh, multiple engineers on different subjects algorithms things like that and so fun times uh, as of right now i'm doing a lot of reviewing uh, just generally looking at looking over a lot of things and you know just kind of kind of getting a refresher from the cs and and everything so that 
Uh, I'm able to be more comfortable in there. I'm able to worry more about the normal anxiety of just like having to talk to another person, you know, about really complex stuff uh, rather than whether or not I can solve the problem or even understand it. So uh, that is where I'm at right now. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I will tell you right now that I'm not going to give fine details over comments or DMs or anything like that. Uh, but if you have any other any other questions or anything, uh, feel free to drop them down there below and I'll see you guys next time.